Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a universal robot in a simulation to a virtual controller. This will require Visual Components Premium and Universal Robots Polyscope, which I have set up here in a virtual machine. So once you have those two items, go to your 4.0 product, and the first thing you want to do is turn on the connectivity feature. So I'll click the File tab to go backstage, click Options, click Add-on, and then you want to turn on the connectivity feature here. So I will click the Enable button, and this will require you to restart the application. So I will click OK to save the change, and then exit out of the application, and restart it. OK, the application has restarted, and we can see the connectivity tab here. Now what you want to do is add the robot to the 3D world. So go to the eCatalog panel, expand models by type, scroll down, Expand Robots, scroll down, select Universal Robots, and for this tutorial you can use either Universal Robot 5, 3, or 10. I'm going to use Universal Robot 5, so UR5. Add it to the 3D world, and there it is. So now I want to connect this robot to my virtual controller. So I'll click the Connectivity tab here, and notice the Connectivity Configuration panel. It has an option for a Universal Robots RTDE connection. So I'll select that type here. I'll then add a new server for a new connection. Notice you have your inputs and your outputs. So server to simulation, these are the inputs you receive from the server. And simulation to server, these are your outputs that you send to the server. So for this connection, I'll go to the Edit Connection Task Pane. And you can see you have to provide an address. So this will be the address to your virtual controller. And once we have that address, we can then test the connection and then click Apply to establish the connection. So let's now go to our virtual machine. And I will make this a bit bigger for you. So let's expand it. And I'm working with Universal Robot 5, so I'll use URSIM UR5. So I'll double click this item here. And I will now click Go to Initialization screen. And what we first want to do is click the Off button then click the on button, then click start, and then click the OK button here. And now we're good to go. We just need to connect this controller to the robot in our simulation. And I will need the IP address of this virtual machine or this version of Polyscope. So I will access the terminal. And it might be very hard to see. So I'm going to use IF config. And the IP address in this case is 192.168.100.141. So I'll remember that. And now I'll go back to my Visual Components product. Let me get there now. I'll minimize this. And for that address, it was 192.168.100.141. I'll now test the connection. And it does succeed, so we know we can connect our simulation, this robot, to the virtual controller. So I'll click OK, then click Apply. And now I have the connection set up, but it's not turned on. So to turn on the connection, I can go to the server connection here and click this button to connect or disconnect. So now it's green. And in the Properties panel, you can see the state of connected is now true. Now, if we want to interact with this robot in the controller to move it in the 3D world, you have to connect the joints of this robot to the joints of the robot controller, the virtual one. So it's going to be from the server to simulation side. So I'll click the input and output here, for this variable group. I'll then click Add Variables. And we're going to be working not with component properties, but with signals. So if I now just leave the Signals filter here selected, in this editor and expand, you can see you have an RTDE interface set up that allows you to quickly connect the joints of the robot. So you want to connect this string signal here called RTDE joints to the outputs of the virtual controller. Notice these are coming from the server to the simulation. And under the folder called joint variables, you want to select target underscore Q. So you want to pair this variable with this variable in the simulation robot. And you can see it's type, it's a string, but it's also a vector. So it'll give you all the joints of the robot. So I'll then click Pair Selected. 
and we can see the link icon here, so they are connected. I'll exit out of the editor, and if I go to my connected variables panel here, we can see the connection is not an output from the simulation to the server, but it's an input from the server to simulation. So we're getting the joint values for the robot from the server. Now in order to interact with the robot with the controller, you have to run the simulation. So I'll start running it now. And the robot goes to that joint pose there. And let's see if I can show you this while I'm working with the virtual machine. So I will unpin these panels and then move this to the side. Then go to my virtual machine. There we go. I'll now exit out of the terminal. Go back to my controller here. And I want to move the robot, so I'll click Move tab. And notice I have this pendant here for moving it. So let's start by moving the robot up. So I'll click the up arrow. And yeah, you can see the robot in the 3D world is moving. So I'm controlling the robot with a virtual controller in the 3D world. So let's just zoom out and get a better view. So we can move it up, we can move it down. We can also move it to the left, the right, based on its orientation. And now we're rotating it. And there we go. And if you want to get feedback about these values that are being inputted to the robot, the joint variables, go to the connected variables panel here. You can see the values are updating. And you have a green icon here. That means there is a success. The values are being updated. Now let's see when you want to simulate a program in your controller in the 3D world. So I will go to File in my virtual controller. And I'll click Off, then click On. Then click Start, and I need to get a better view of the robot controller. There we go. So I need to click this OK button. And now I'll go to File, Load, and I'll load this simple move program here. And now if I go to my Play button, need to hold down the auto key here until the robot gets into the right position. And now everything is OK, indicated by this button here. So if I now click OK, the robot should be moving in the 3D world. Let me go back there. Sorry, I showed a mistake, but I'll leave it in the video so we learn from it. I actually need to go to the File tab here, and then I need to exit out of this. Let me actually get a better view of the virtual machine. There we go. And I'll click OK, but I need to go to the File tab. It lets me. There we go. And I need to click Exit. So I'll exit out of this. And now I can load a robot program. So I'll click the Program Robot tab here. And then click the Load Program button. And then get that simple move program here. So I'll click Open. And now if I go to Graphics tab here, we can see this is what the robot's supposed to do. So if I play it, see the robot is moving from that position to the other position. So we can see the robot program listed here. And if I go back to my 3D world, we can see that's what the robot is doing. Great. So that's a simple and easy way to simulate a robot program in the 3D world that you have loaded from Polyscope or the virtual controller. Let's go ahead and stop this. So I will reset the simulation and you can see nothing is happening right now with the robot, even though the program is still running in the virtual controller. So let's go ahead and stop that and I'll just exit out of it. Now if you want to program a robot in the 3D world and then post-process that program and send it to the virtual controller, you can do that. We have an add-on, which you can find in our forum. So you want to go to Visual Components Forum, Extensions, Python Add-ons, Visual Components Add-on Samples, and look for this post here. So if you scroll down, you want to get this zip file. So just download it. And you want to extract the files into your My Commands folder here. So open that folder, select it, and then Extract. There we go. And if I exit out of this and close my web browser, I'll now restart the 4.0 product. 
And I don't need to save the layout right now. And just restart everything. Okay, I restarted the software. So if I now go to the Program tab, you can see over here you have an export group called Post Processor. So you want to use this command for post-processing your robot program to uh, Universal Robot. So let's go to our Home tab. And then our eCatalog panel, go back to Robots and get a UR5 robot. Add that to the 3D world. And let's tell the robot to do something. So I'll go to the Program tab. I'll then use the Jog command to move the robot around. So let's just create a simple program. Move the robot there. And move it over here. And then let's say all the way over here. Now we're dancing. And all the way over here. And reset. So now we want to export this robot program to a compatible file that can be simulated with a universal robot. So I'll go to the export group, click post process, and I now need to save the file. So I will save it in my visual components file. And I want to move this file to the programs directory here for the UR5 robot. So my virtual machine will just open that directory. There we go. And let's see if I have my settings right. I should be able just to drag and drop the file. And it was completed with errors. So error getting the information. But you can use a USB to do this. In the future we will have a FTP system to easily transfer files from the main software to your controller. And it seems that the file did not move. So let's go ahead and copy this and try pasting. And that worked. So we can see there's the program file there. So it's a script. So let's exit out of this, go to our UR5 controller, and I will make it bigger. And now, in our robot program, what you need to do is go to the program here, and then for Structure tab, you want to go to Advanced, and then click Script Codes. So this allows you to paste in script for the robot's program. So I've already done that here, and that's why it's listed there. So if I now go to the Command tab, my script that I have selected is going to come from a file. So I select File here, then click Edit, and then I can open a file. And it's going to be my example robot program script. Click open. And I want to save this. So I'll click save. Then exit. And we don't need the rest of this robot program. So I can go ahead and delete this stuff. So I will try to select all of this and delete it. So let's use the move and delete that. Just go back to structure and I can delete it. There we go. So delete that move and delete this last statement called set. So now we're left with just the script. So if I go to the graphics tab, let's now simulate this. So I will make my virtual controller a bit smaller. Go back to my visual components product and let's drag it to the side here. Unpin those panels. And let's see if I go back to the connectivity tab. I do need to establish another connection, I believe. Yes, I do. So what you could do is you could save the layout and all of your connectivity uh, that you have defined here will be saved with the layout. But here I'll just quickly add it again. So the IP address is not changed for the connection. So 192.168.100.141. Let's test the connection. It's good. I'll click apply. And we are connected. So I'll turn on the connection. Then from server to simulation, this variable group, I'm going to add a variable. And it's going to be a signal from the UR5 robot. That's from the RTD interface connection we have set up for this string signal for the joints. And from the server side, I'll go to joint variables directory, select target underscore Q, and I'm going to pair these two variables. So I'll click pair selected. You can see they are connected. And when I exit out of this and go to my connected variables panel, you can see they are connected and listed here. Now we have the question mark here because we haven't started the simulation, so there's no input being received from the server to the simulation. But if I start running it, you see the robot is at this joint configuration. And the connected variables panel, you can see the variable pair. It is now a check mark, so green is good. 
And if I go to my virtual controller, and let's get a better look at our program. And then we'll need to make this probably a bit bigger. So I can see the controls. And if I now press play, the robot is moving in the controller. So if I go back to this 3D world, we can see, yep, we're now simulating that program we did in our 3D world with the 4.0 product. We then post-process that robot program, moved it to our virtual machine, and now this virtual controller is, simul is running that program, actually, and it's being simulated in the 3D world here. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.